Have you ever heard of the Battle of Tannenberg? Well, there's actually two. One battle took place in the year of 1410 and is also known as the Battle of Grunwald in which the Teutonic Knights fought against the Poles and the Lithuanians and were defeated. But there was also a second battle of Tannenberg which took place in the early stages of the First World War where the Germans fought against the Russians and achieved a major victory. How did they manage to do that? That's what you're going to learn today. In this video, I'm going to talk about the Battle of Tannenberg. Welcome back regular viewers and if you're new, my name is Dave and I'm a history teacher from the Netherlands and I like to hustle history on location for you. And if you like that, then please consider subscribing and if you do so, hit that notification bell so you will become part of the hustle. And I'm on location, but what is here to see? Well, not much, but the question is, what was here to see? And that was the Hindenburg Mausoleum, that also served as a German monument to commemorate the fallen German soldiers that fell during this ferocious battle that took place in 1914. However, the monument doesn't exist anymore. Well, only some pieces here and there. What happened? So before getting into that, let's talk about the Battle of Tannenberg first, because that's where this video is all about. When the First World War broke out, the Germans had a plan to conquer France, and this plan was named the von Schlieffen Plan. The German forces moved through Belgium in a circular movement in order to outflank the French, and thus defeating them. In the meanwhile, the Russians had to mobilize and the Germans, they expected the Russians to mobilize three full weeks. So the plan was that the Germans would first defeat the French and then take care of the Russians. However, the Russians mobilized much faster than the Germans had anticipated. And thus, the Germans had to direct forces from the Western to the Eastern Front. Mid-August 1914, German forces were 50 miles from Warsaw. Meanwhile, two Russian armies advanced through East Russia. One army was led by General Samsonov, the other by Rennenkampf, a Russian general with Baltic German origins. Samsonov's army got into battle with the German First Corps, which was led by a German general named Francois. Yeah, so we have like a Russian general with a German name and a German general named Francois. After the Battle of Staliponen, the Germans retreated to a stronger position. Rennenkampf took the German city of Gumbinnen, later the German town of Rastenburg, which was located in the very center of Germany's easternmost province, was taken, and the capital of Königsberg might be next. German general Hoffmann wrote in his diary, there has never been and no doubt will never be again such a war as this, fought with such a bestial fury. The Russians are burning everything down. There was panic on the German side and some people spoke of the evacuation of the entire province of East Prussia. German General Hoffmann ordered von Pritzwitz to attack but he had no will to fight any longer and thus he was replaced by the retired 67 year old General Hindenburg. Although the ensuing Battle of Tannenberg, the collective name for a series of actions between the 24th and 31st of August, became the greatest encirclement operation of the war, this was not part of Ludendorff's initial expectation. So what happened? The detachment led by General Francois didn't attack right away. This was against orders. Ludendorff was angry about it, but Hoffmann convinced him to thrust in Francois' plan. Another detachment fought against Samsonov's troops, but then Francois' troops performed a surprise attack. For a second time, Francois ignored orders and went further east with the goal of encircling the bulk of the Russian troops. And this was a success. Samsonov's army was surrounded and von Rennenkampf had to come to his aid, but did not make it in time. Now some historians argue that von Rennenkampf this is intentionally because there was a rivalry between him and General Samsonov. The army of Rennenkampf was defeated at the Missourian Lakes. Samsonov was heavily disillusioned by this enormous defeat. He wandered into the forest. He took his pistol and then 
shot himself. By the end, his force had lost 92 prisoners, 500 guns and perhaps 50,000 dead and wounded against German casualties of 10 to 15,000. It was Hoffmann who proposed changing the place of victory to Tannenberg, the scene of a battle five centuries earlier in which the Teutonic Knights, among them Hindenburg, had been massacred by a vast army of Slavs and Lithuanians. The Battle of Tannenberg, as it became known in history, was described by General Ironside as the greatest defeat suffered by any of the combatants during the war. The enormous Russian defeat, which they suffered here, as well as the later defeat at the Missourian Lakes was a severe blow for the Russian morale. And this was only the beginning because more blows would follow. And eventually this would lead to the Russian Revolution of 1917. As for Germany, well, General Hindenburg became a national hero. But to be fair, Hoffmann and Francois also deserve credit. When Hindenburg passed away, in 1934, he was placed at the Memorial of Tannenberg, which was built in the mid-1920s to commemorate the fallen soldiers that fell during this enormous battle. And then it was January 1945. The Second World War was in its latter stages. German troops retreated from East Prussia, which was now overrun by the Soviet troops. Hitler ordered the Tannenberg Memorial to be destroyed. And so it happened. After the war was over, this area became part of the new Polish state and the Polish authorities, they raised the monument. Except for one lion statue, which is placed in the city center of Alcztynek, nearby where this monument used to be. And there are some pieces scattered around this area here and there. If you want to know more about the First World War, you want to learn about a Russian victory, because yes, there were Russian victories in the First World War, you can click right here. Now, if you want to learn how the Germans eventually achieved victory on the Eastern Front of the First World War, you can click right here. Check me out on Patreon, because with your donations, I can travel to places like this and make more and awesome and cooler content for you. Thank you so much for watching. Do not forget to subscribe. I'll see you later.